Erickson Lubin gets stopped in the ninth round against Sebastian the Tower and Inferno Fundora. Let me give my thoughts on this fight. First, let me say this, man. That was a fucking dope ass fight, man. Awesome fight. Awesome scrap. Initially, I had Erickson Lubin. I had Erickson Lubin winning that fight. I had him stopping Fan Fundora in the seventh round. I think it was the seventh round. And I think that's the round Lubin ended up knocking him down in. I believe it was the seventh. So <laughs> that was crazy. Man, but from the from the first bell, the fight was just just action packed from the gut from the jump. You had Lubin in there mix Lubin was standing there in the pocket trying to mix it up with Fundora. Second round though, uh Lubin got clipped with something. And before he got clipped, he looked a little shook up, I think. He shook him up. Fundora shook him up. I think it was with an uppercut. Then he hit him with another uppercut later on in the round and knocked him down. And everybody, I know, I'm like, damn, boy, that chin. That chin, bro. Every fight Lubin is in, he gets hurt. I was talking about this. I made a chin check series on him. You know, I didn't want to say, you know, he's chinny. But uh, I think uh, right now, you got to say his chin might be a little questionable. But at the same time, he was taking a lot of fucking shots and didn't fall. So... Maybe uh, Iverson Lubin is one of those different kind of uh, circumstance uh, cases where maybe like a, 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 he can't take shots that he can't see coming very well. Maybe that's what it is. If he can't really brace for it and his chin can't hold up to it. But then if his shots he know is coming, he can probably, I guess, brace for him a little better because shit, man. He was fucked up, man. He was looking like a unicorn, man. He, and he didn't he didn't drop anymore. And he still managed to drop Fundora with his face busted up. Possibly it looked like his jaws broke. Nose looked broke. He had a big uh I don't know what the what the fuck that was on his head. But that shit gotta be drained. It looked like a big abscess formed on his head. A, a big ass pocket of fucking fluid and shit, man. Man. I hope he all right, man, for real. That was crazy. I, that was one of the most disfigured faces I've seen in a long time, man. And then, you know, Lubin wasn't listening to his corner. They telling him, yo, bro, you're you, you, you trying to fight this dude's fight. You got to stick it out there. You, stick, you know, he wasn't boxing, bro. He was trying to bring it to Fundora. I mean, damn. It, it, he wasn't hitting a body. I was telling, I was saying in my prediction, he was going to hit him. He was going to break him down to the body. And then at one point, he hit him to the body. He did feel it. But then he knocked him down later on in the fight. He knocked down Fundora. And he that's the first time Fundora been down. So it was a first for that. And the first time Lubin looked like that in the fight. Shit. That was, that was crazy, man. But... Fedora, man. That chin on that guy. I just made a damn... I just made a a, a chin check series on a video on him. If you ain't see it, go check it out. I just got through talking about his chin. Like, it would be tested against Erickson Lubin because he got good power. And, yo, Lubin was hitting him with all type of shit, man. And, and the dude wasn't going nowhere. That shot that... That wobbled him that got to him. That was just Lubin. You know, he he was in fight mode, bro. That was he pulled some adrenaline out of him and just gave it all he had. You know, I learned a lot in this fight. I learned a lot in this fight. I learned that Sebastian Vondora has a fucking solid chin. He has a good chin. His chin is still um we will still have to see when it comes to like a Jamel Charlo type power though. We will have to see how that goes or something like that. Brian Castaño or somebody like that. But we'll see. Because um, more than likely, he's lined up to fight the winner of Charlo Castaño, too. So we'll, we'll see. I also learned that Ergis Lubin's chin, uh, it, it, it might be a bit questionable. But it, it's like a different kind of questionable because he was taking some shots. 
that most dudes would have went down on, and he didn't even he didn't go down anymore. He went down one time through all of that beating he was taking, and it wasn't like he was running. He wasn't. He was still in the pocket. He was backing up a little bit, and he still didn't drop. You know. Um, I also learned that um, that um, that Erickson Lubin is is a is a warrior. He's a game dog. I learned that, and he probably figured that out himself tonight, that he he probably didn't know he had that in him. He pulled it out of him, and he showed that. So he got some grit. He got some dog in him, or he got a lot of warrior in him. You know what I'm saying? He was willing to keep going until they stopped it. You know, um, what's next, though, <laughs> for – um. Man, he was listening to his trainer, man. I was saying he should have just, if he would have just focused more on the body. He wasn't focused on the body, man. Yo, got my man Lubin face was looking like when you put your thumb in your mouth and you blow. That's how that shit was looking like. He was trying to, you know, like, he put his thumb in his mouth and tried to, like, float in the air and shit. And his face was swelling up and shit. That shit looked crazy. It was like he was, like, full of helium or some shit. That shit wasn't looking good, man. I just hope he's he, he all right. It's, you know, they, this might, yo, Erickson Lubin might never be the same again, bro. You never know. That that might have took a lot out of him. When you get beat like that, shit take a lot out of a fighter, bro. We don't know if he'll be the same no more. It, it, you might even could say that Erickson Lubin might just be a gatekeeper if he keeps boxing. You know, more than likely, he'll be back. He'll probably end up being just a gatekeeper, bro. I, I don't see him. I don't think he's going to really be able to hang with the top dudes. He's not hanging with Tim Zhu and all these. Nah, you know Tim Zhu. I don't. I don't see what's so special about Tim Zhu, but I'm just saying, like any of him, any of these dudes. Um, shit, Tony Harrison would probably spank him. I, he probably knocked Tony Harrison out though, but depends. Depends. But any of the top five, I, I don't know, man. I don't know if I don't know if Lubin is really if if he really cut for it, bro. I'm not sure if he should just move up and we can do better at 160 or, or what's next for him, man. I don't know because, yo, the shit he was taking tonight, yeah, that could fuck somebody's career up, man. Hopefully, he'll be back from that. He should. He's a young dude, but I ain't like seeing him take that beating, bro. If he would have just listened to his corner and they telling him, look, yo, what are you doing, bro? You stand there letting them pound on you and you know, like all type of shit. Then he started getting tired. Because, you know, Fondora, after a while, you start seeing them kind of, like, tie him up a little bit, kind of leaning on him a little bit. Fondora's a fucking, he's a he's a monster in his own, he's a beast in his own sense, bro. But I see flaws in him, too. And if he don't fix a lot of those flaws, it's going to be night-night for him. Absolutely. I see it. If he think he he got to sharpen up a lot if he going in there with with, with Jamel Charlo. He going to sharpen up a whole lot, in my opinion. Definitely Brian Castano. Can can Sebastian Fondura hurt Brian Castano or uh, or Jamel or Jamel Charlo? Um, yeah, he can. He could hurt them. He, I mean, a little bit. Uh, there, both of those dudes are more durable than Erickson Lubin. Given you know. But anybody could be hurt. Jamel Charles been hurt before. Brian Castaño has been hurt. So, yeah. But we will have to see, though, because uh, if they end up scrapping, man, I got Jamel winning against Fundura unless he works on his defense and, and, and his outboxing and stuff like that. If he could work on his defense and, like, his outboxing, I think he'll be a problem. Big problem. But anyway, that's just my thoughts on this fight. Let me know what you thought about this fight between Sebastian Fundura and Erickson Lubin. Drop a comment. Y'all make sure y'all like the channel, support it, subscribe for more raw content. This is Rebel Life Boxing. I'll see y'all later on the next one, and I'm out. Peace.